Uh, welcome to part B, um, and uh, hopefully you watched part A first. I mean, that would be the standard uh, operating procedure. So here we go. All right, so these next two uh, models that we're going to look at are both uh, categorically what we might call an inverse because it's uh, something over something like this. Um, in this case, it's what we call inverse squared. And in this case, we, we just call it inverse. Uh, the difference between the two models really is uh, how quickly they drop off or get larger. So for example, if you're looking at the peak spectral intensity of a black body radiation source, um, it's going to have this sort of appearance, like this, okay? And in that case, uh, the hotter the object gets, the shorter the wavelength gets, that sort of thing. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but hang with me. Um, another case might be um, like gravity. Now, gravity uh, has goes as 1 over r squared, Newton's universal law of gravity. And so it's actually, uh, it drops off more quickly, comes a little closer like this, and then pops up like that. All right. So if you had these two things here, what you basically um, could learn about either of them is something like the closer the things get, the stronger it is, maybe something like that. Uh, and the further away things are, the weaker it is. That kind of thing. Okie dokie. Um, the last uh, equation that we'll look at here is an oscillating model. And something that oscillates, it goes back and forth, okay? So we're some, an object like this. So uh, it could be a pendulum and it's swinging uh, back and forth like that, um, or any of a variety of things. So um, this guy right here, that's how we get it to oscillate. We use the sine function. Uh, most of the time, uh, note that this information inside the argument, that's the parentheses there, uh, needs to be in radians, okay? So this guy is going to look something like this, okay? All right, now, a couple of things about that. Um, sine starts at zero, and I have done the best of my drawing to get close to zero, all right? A has to do with the amplitude, okay, right there. So I've got the same basic amplitude for all of these things. Um, and then omega is going to tell us about how quickly it oscillates. The better word for this is the frequency, okay? So let's look at a different one. Um, if I were to do the same thing but use a different value for omega, Okay, then um, I would get something that looked like this, okay? These are super hard to draw, okay? Um, so, uh, or if I had something that had a larger amplitude, then maybe it would look like this, okay? Um, you get the kind of idea like that. Now, the one thing I haven't showed you yet is what happens with doing um, what that guy does, okay? That's the Greek letter phi, and it's called a phase constant in this particular case. And sine always starts at zero if phi itself is zero. But if phi is not zero, then we might could get it to peak early, so to speak, like this. Okay. Or we could get it even to move exactly opposite of a regular sine function. Okay, um, So we have a lot of control over modeling what we have. All right? So maybe we have a short pendulum that goes back and forth really quickly. Or maybe we have a longer one um, that has a longer oscillation value. So... Um, this one uh, is, is, I think, is pretty funny. Uh, you, some of you may have seen it on a t-shirt uh, or not. Um, it is actually Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics. 
Okay, and it represents the peak of physics in the 19th century. All right. Uh, without these equations here, we wouldn't have relativity. We wouldn't have radio waves uh, that we use, uh, all, all kinds of things like that. Uh, now, at this point, we are not going to attempt to understand what all this is. You can see that it uses a variety of strange-looking figures, okay, some of which might be familiar to you, some perhaps not. Um, don't worry about it right now. I just wanted you to see what a really complex and uh, useful-looking model does. Okay, so here then um, are your take-home points, okay? So, first of all, you need to know um, how, we use how we use mathematics in physics to make models, um, and that it's just a little bit different. It's the same thing, but it looks different than the stuff you've been doing um, in math classes. Um, you need to understand about uh, what's the difference between parameters and variables and how they affect an equation. Um, and then you kind of need to have an appreciation for how simple or complex uh, a model can be uh, mathematically. Now, that's all I have for you, so I'm going to cue my music. Can you hear it? Uh-huh. I like it. I'm going to go now. Bye. <laughs>